Good evening. Welcome to my laboratory. All right, this is part two of the uh, phase shift measurement problem issue relating to measuring um, a current phase in uh, reactive circuits like the micro quig and the big big quig, big big Jim's quig. Okay. So, uh, as you know, if you, if you haven't watched the previous two videos, please watch them first. Watch my microqueague video and then watch part one, phase part one. This is phase part two. Okay, so in the microqueague video, I showed the use of a, a loop stick as a current transformer. Uh, and, I, and I took the core out of one of my loop sticks and just slipped the loop stick over the... One of the uh, one of the legs of the primary coil, which I seem to have lost in here somewhere. There's a Tesla by Filer primary. Oh, there it is, right there. Okay, so I just took the loop stick and slipped it over one of these legs, uh, and used that to monitor the current. Now the loop stick is basically a, a solenoidal coil. And uh, so that's essentially just wrapping a coil around the wire that conducts uh, current to the coil. Okay. And I uh, used that as a current transformer, not to monitor the amplitude of the current, but rather just to monitor the phase. And then I compared the phase of that signal to the phase of the voltage across the whole coil and computed power, reactive power, and from that, and I showed on the scope that the phase angle looked like it was very small between the current sensed and the voltage signal. So it looks like there's a lot of real power circulating in the coil since that phase angle is small. Okay, but what if the current measuring system itself introduces a phase error or rather its own phase shift in the signal that you're measuring? So what I've got here is I've got a test arrangement where I have uh, just a, a straight wire of the same 12 gauge solid copper house wire that I made the uh, primary coil out of. And I've got three different current monitoring systems attached to that wire. Over here I have, whoops, I have stuff falling around all over the place. Over here, this black thing over here is a uh, uh, 0.25 ohm Ayrton Perry wound non-inductive current viewing resistor. It's an ohmite. I forget the part number, but I'll list it in the description. So I'm looking at the voltage drop. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm supplying that single wire with a signal from the F43 function generator. There's the black output lead and there's the red output lead from the F43. So I'm giving that thing a signal of 300 kilohertz sine wave, just like the QEG, uh, uh, micro QEG was giving. Okay, so here then is the current viewing resistor, so we're monitoring the voltage drop across that current viewing resistor, and since that's a, as close to a purely resistive load as I could find, non-inductive resistor, uh, the voltage drop here, of course, is going to be in phase with the voltage that I'm supplying. So that's our reference current. We know that the current indicated by this system is in phase with the voltage that I'm supplying, okay? So let's check to see if there's a phase shift in the current that's detected by this coil and also another little coil that I've wound. This is a toroid here with a hundred turns in a toroidal winding as the winding around the toroid and then the toroid is slipped over the wire. And that's more like the Rogowski kind of coil, Stan Genes, uh, Stan Genes current monitoring transformer that is uh, commercially used for this kind of thing and that the uh, main QEG group uses for their current monitoring. So we'll compare the phase shifts um, introduced by these two current monitoring methods into the measurement. This doesn't affect the phase of what's really happening, but it affects what you're going to see on your measuring equipment in terms of the phase, right? Okay, so that's the test setup. and. Uh, right now, uh, right now we're hooked up. Oh, one more thing: the uh, the polarity of the solenoidally wound coil affects the phase, of course, the sensed phase. So 
I know that when I have it hooked up in th this polarity, I've got it correct. Uh, if I had it hooked up in the opposite polarity, the phase that it would give out would be 180 degrees different. And it would look 180 degrees out of phase from the signal over here, plus whatever inductive artifact it introduces. Okay, interesting question. A quiz question for contemplation is, is that same thing true? Oh, uh, with the solenoidal coil, if I reverse it, if I flip it over, that also has the same effect. It reverses the phase. Uh, because the current then is going through the coil in the opposite direction relative to the coil. Okay, uh, if you reverse the polarity of the hookup to the toroidal coil, that also, of course, reverses the displayed or sensed phase that it outputs. What about if you take it off and flip it over and put it back on? Does it behave the same as this one? Does it invert the phase if you do that instead of changing the polarity of the wiring. I'll leave that as a question for contemplation. Okay, so now let's go to the scope. All right, now let's go to the oscilloscope screen. Now this is definitely advanced scoposcopy here, so uh, everything needs to be set up properly. We're going to be doing a phase uh, measurement, so we're not interested in the absolute values of the voltage, but we are interested in what it looks like on a display screen. Okay, so uh, I am going to crank up the amplitude of the F43's signal now. And what I've got here on the top trace, that's the trace from the uh, non-inductive current viewing resistor. And then this bottom trace is the trace from the uh, current transformer coil under test. And you can see there's a phase shift going on there. Okay, so... Uh, and as I showed in the other video, the last video, if you go to the XY mode, you see a Lisa Zhu figure that indicates qualitatively by the, uh, by the thickness and the angle, um, it indicates the phase shift between those two signals. What I'm going to do now is show you how to actually compute the actual phase shift uh, from that Lisa Zhu figure. Okay, using this formula here. Let's take a look at that. Uh, you can see that what we're doing is we're com comparing the um, height at the origin of the Lissajou figure with the height uh, at maximum of the Lissajou figure. So in order for that to happen, uh, the ratio of yo to yim in order for that to be correct, you've got to have that Lissajou your figure properly centered on the screen, right? And the phase angle then is the arc sine of the ratio of those um, those two heights. Okay, so here's here's what you have to do. You have to make sure that the amplitude of these two signals is equal and that they're centered on the screen. So let's use the vertical position control oops, that's not it, use the vertical position control to bring those two guys, in fact you can even set the uh, baselines of both channels to right on the center and then go to DC coupled and now you have um, both signals symmetrically about the center vertically and then you can use the Normally, uh, normally you operate with uh, little calibration knobs on your on your uh, vertical amplitudes. You operate with those all the way over to the right, but not in the cal detent. Okay, and that gives you accurate indications on your uh, volts per division. But here, what we're going to do is we're going to use these knobs to adjust both of those traces to exactly the same amplitude on the display and you may even have to change the switch setting in order to do that so you, what you want to do is get them both at exactly the same amplitude like that okay and centered top to bottom and I also like to use this calibration control on the time base to get an even number 
or a known number of divisions between peak and peak on the top there. So here I have one, two, three, four, five. Let's see, there we go. One, two, three, four, five divisions exactly from peak to peak there. So down here we should be two and a half divisions over. So that can also tell you now the phase shift because um, 360 degrees is all the way across. Two and a half across is 180. Actually, I guess it's probably more convenient if you set that at four divisions, right? One, two, three, four. So now each division represents 90 degrees of phase difference in that signal. So you can see already that we have almost 90 degrees of phase shift indicated right there. Okay. Now let's take a look at what the Lissajous figure looks like. All right. Uh, and if you've done your setup right, you should be very close to exactly centered with your Lissajous figure uh, already. But if you're not, like here we're off a little bit to the left, you can use the vertical and horizontal position controls and even the uh, let's see here. All right. So you get it good and centered. And now what we want to do is we want to measure the maximum height and compare that to the height at the intersection of the origin line there and the vertical line. Okay. All right. So actually, let's call that 29. Let's see. 10, 20, or wait a minute, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, but it's not quite up to the top yet, there on top and bottom, so it's 29, and then at the origin we have a little bit over, yeah, about one and a half, one and a half, so let's go 27 over 29 here, do, 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 do. arc sign, parentheses, 27 divided by 29, close parentheses, whoops, second function, arc sine, parentheses, 27 divided by 29, close parentheses, equals 68. Okay.